The problem text goes like this. A stream of water exits from a nozzle of a hose with the constant unknown speed v. As we are reading this, it would probably be useful to draw a coordinate system and imagine what this would look like. <coughs> Sorry. A child plays with the hose by rotating it randomly in a fixed vertical xy plane. Okay, so we can imagine the hose moving slowly up and down. The nozzle is kept at x and y equals zero, and the angle between the nozzle's axis and the horizon is never less than 45 degrees, as shown in the animation. At each moment in time, the stream in the air has an irregular shape. The shape at one instant is shown in the figure below. Question is, using the figure below, can you determine the exit speed of water V? Okay, this problem should seem complicated to you, and I'm sure you're having many questions about it, especially if you're not used to problem solving. Perhaps one of the most important questions you can ask is, why should I care? And depending on your tolerance for solving problems, that one can be hard to answer. But what I can tell you is that just the act of participating in the solving of this problem will bring you satisfaction. And if nothing else, you will learn some useful tricks along the way. If you choose to stick around, I've split this video into three parts, each containing some key idea needed for solving of this problem. Now is also the perfect time for me to tell you to feel free to pause this video anytime you get an aha moment and try to solve the rest of the problem by yourself. With that being said, we are good to go. You might feel stuck looking at this shape because it contains a lot of information and the question is where to start? So our first problem solving tip for today is start simple and build from there. And what is the simplest possible problem setup we can think of that still has some difficulty to it? Well, one can imagine that the child didn't move the hose at all. What would be the resulting shape? I'm sure many of you have thought of projectile motion. Because we have an object, in this case water, being shot at some angle theta with some speed v. Equations for such a motion are shown on the screen and I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. What we can do now is that we can express t from the first equation in terms of x and plug it in into the second equation. If we rearrange things a bit, we obtain the formula for our resulting shape. Now the problem is, if a child starts moving our hose, things start to get complicated really quick. Maybe we can take a different approach. Instead of trying to simplify the problem setup, can we simplify the problem requirements? Instead of finding the exact speed, can we at least set some boundaries on it? From the picture, we can definitely see that there is water at distance 11.5 meters horizontally from the origin. This means that whatever the speed of our water is, it can definitely reach that far from its source. For projectile motion, maximal distance is when projectile is fired at an angle of 45 degrees and it is given by a simple expression. If we plug in the numbers, we can get a lower boundary for our speed, that is 10.6 meters per second. And this is a nice start, but we need to keep in mind that this is only a rough estimate, as the point labeled on the figure has yet to reach its maximal distance. So far, we have only focused on a single point in this figure, and it is obvious that we will need to take the whole picture in consideration for the final solution. Somehow, we need to find a property that is common for all of these trajectories. Think about this. Could you have solved the problem if I were to give you another shape? Here we arrive at our second problem solving tip. If a pattern is irregular, is it special? What I mean by this is that you shouldn't focus on the specifics of our shape but rather think of it as one of the many possible shapes. Now the question is, what do all of these shapes have in common? To answer this question, let's play a different game. You are given a cannon that can fire projectiles all with the same speed. The question is, what points can you hit with this cannon? Obviously, there are some boundaries. 
such as maximum height and distance of an object that can be hit, as we saw earlier. Here I am showing all the possible parabolas that our projectiles can take when we vary the launching angle. Our task is to find a curve that encompasses all of these trajectories. There is actually a mathematical term for such a curve, and it is called an envelope. More precisely, an envelope is a curve tangent to each member of family of curves at some point. The general story about envelopes is beyond the scope of this video, but luckily, Paralogical made an amazing video explaining everything you need to know about envelopes, so please do check it out. Ok, now, how do we find this curve? Turns out there is already a great video on this topic by Gabriel Trigo, again, check it out. However, I'm gonna provide a different proof from his, while he has shown an algebraic solution, I'm gonna show you the geometrical one. To do this, I will need to use a fact about parabolas that often gets overlooked. Parabola is actually defined as a set of points, all having an equal distance from a common point called the focus, and a horizontal line called the directrix, the directrix, I don't know, directrix. It is always nice to label our points, so I will call the focus F, the point on parabola P, and the point on directrix D. Using this notation, we can say that for every point on parabola, it's true that FP equals PD. What is cool about projectile trajectories with common speed is that they are also parabolas and all with common directrix. You can convince yourself that this is true because the height of directrix is maximum height the projectile can reach, that is v squared over 2g. And what can we say about focus points? Well, every point on parabola is the same distance apart from the focus and from the directrix, and origin of our projectiles is also the parabola, so that means that OD equals to OF1, and this is true for all focus points possible, so OF1 equals to OF2 equals to OF3 and so on. Well, uh, wait a minute, this means that all of the focus points lie on a circle. How nice! And the radius of the circle is height of the directrix, that is YD. Okay. Now for the main part. Let's draw a point somewhere on this picture. How to tell if it can be hit by some of our parabolas? Well, if we draw a circle from this point, tangent to the directrix, and that circle intersects the bigger circle at two points, it means that there are two possible parabolas that contain our point. Why? Well, because our point is then the same distance from a focus and directrix, hence it belongs on the parabola. Other thing that can happen is, our circle touches the bigger one at one point, meaning it is on the edge of being hit, it can barely be hit. And the third possibility is that there is no intersections, hence our target cannot be hit. Second case is the most interesting for us, as those are the points that are on the border of the region that we can hit, and one we cannot. In other words, they define our envelope. Let us zoom out a bit. Something interesting happens if we add another line, twice as high as the directrix of our parabolas. We know that P1T equals TP2 because both are lying on a circle. And we know that FP1 equals to P2D because that's how we define this new line. That in turn means that FT equals to TD, or in other words, every target T that is on the edge of being hit is the same distance from a common point f and the common horizontal line. We heard this phrase a dozen times now, these points define a parabola. So the envelope of our parabolas is in fact a parabola. Beautiful. Ok, so how does this connect to our problem? Well, our shape is made up of many parabolas and we just concluded that every one of them lies under and is tangent to our envelope. In turn, our envelope is uniquely defined by speed of the water, so if we find the envelope of our shape, we can finally find the speed. Now that there is only one thing left to do, I have the third and the final problem solving tip for you today, and that is, play around. I mean, seriously, now is the last chance to pause the video and give it a try. We return to our drawing of a parabola for one last clue. One easily provable fact about points on parabola is that the sum of distances from focus and any horizontal line is constant. 
What we want to prove is that the sum fp plus pq is constant along a parabola. Well, we already know that fp equals to pd. So fp plus pq becomes pd plus pq. And we can see from the picture that this is indeed constant because it is equal to the distance from the directrix and our horizontal line. It can be easily shown that for the points below the parabola this sum is less and for the points above the parabola this sum is greater. So for the point on our shape touching the envelope, we know that this sum must be the greatest since all other points are below the envelope. This sum can be written algebraically as s equals square root of x squared plus y squared plus y and thus it can be calculated for every point on the shape. These sums are shown on the figure and we can see that the maximal one is 14.6. So we found it. We found the point touching the envelope. So one last thing left to do is to actually calculate the speed. Since this sum is constant along the envelope, we can calculate it at some point that we can connect to the speed. Perhaps the easiest way to do this is to calculate it at point of furthest distance, since we already know the formula for that one. Rearranging a few terms around and plugging in the numbers, we finally obtain our solution. The speed of the water is 12 meters per second. This problem actually appeared in the EUFO 2019 competition. EUFO stands for European Physics Olympiad and it gathers only the best students who excel at national competitions in physics. The competition itself consists of two parts, one with experimental and one with theoretical tasks. The theoretical part has three problems, all of which are simplistic in their formulation, like the one we saw today, and none of them are easy to solve. Problems get progressively harder and the problem we saw today was third, so the hardest one. And how hard was the problem for contestants that year, you might wonder? Well, only 3 of 170 students solved it fully for 10 points. The difficulty of this problem is obvious if we look at the histograms for all three problems. While the distribution of points for first two problems is spread out, Distribution for our third problem has one large spike at zero. It means that as much as 140 students didn't manage to get even one point on this problem. <clears throat> I included this information in the video because I hope that while watching this video you got a feeling that you could have come up with the solution by yourself. And this is one of the hardest problems I encountered in physics ever. This was meant to show that even Olympiad level problems in physics aren't impossible for us to solve. It just requires us to put in practice and effort. I leave you now with this perfect loop of auto shapes as I say my final words. This problem was stuck in my head for days when I tried to solve it, and it stayed there long after I saw the solution. It has everything. It is elegant, it is mysterious, it provides an opportunity to learn a lot. My main hope is that you now see the beauty in this problem and that you will continue to seek it in other problems, in mathematics, physics and in real life. Until next time, stay sharp.